Okay. Keep an eye on us, so make sure you're doing the right thing okay. at the right time. Which way we face? Uh, you can look at me right now. Okay. okay. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. We gather as uh, people of faith today, family and friends, to celebrate and rejoice. In a few moments, these two fine young people are going to stand before all of us and before God. And their knees are going to be shaking, their stomachs are going to be churning, and they're going to enter into the most sacred covenant that they'll ever enter into their lives, a covenant of marriage. And so we as family and friends gather today asking the Lord to bless these two wonderful people and to keep them healthy, happy, and holy, and faithful to their marriage commitment. And so we uh, assure you of our prayers and want you to relax, all shall be well, because the Lord is with you today, and so are we, supporting, encouraging you, and committing our prayers for you, not only today, but all the days of your lives. We begin our prayer today in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. I invite the bridal party now to return to their seats and let us sing and celebrate and proclaim the glory to God. Does that include us? Yeah, go ahead. A reading from the book of Tobit. On their wedding night, Tobiah arose from the bed and said to his wife, Sister, get up. Let us pray and beg our Lord to have mercy on us and to grant us deliverance. Sarah got up, and they started to pray and begged that deliverance might be theirs. They began with these words, Blessed are you, O God of our fathers. Praise be thy name forever and ever. Let the heavens and all creation 
praise you forever. You made Adam and you gave him his wife Eve to be his help and support. And from these two, the human race descended. You said, it is not good for man to be alone. Let us make him a partner like himself. Now, Lord, you know that I take this wife to be mine, not because of lust, but for the noble purpose. Call down your mercy on me and her, and allow us to live together to a happy old age. They said together, Amen, Amen. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Brothers and sisters, put on, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, heartfelt compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If one has agreements against another, as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also do. And over all these, put on love. That is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of Christ control your hearts, the peace into which you were also called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as in all wisdom we teach and admonish one another, singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. And whatever you do, in word or in deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. The word of the Lord.
Jesus said to his disciples, you are the salt of the earth. But if salt loses its taste, with what can it be seasoned? It is no longer good for anything but to be thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city set on a mountain cannot be hidden, nor do they light a lamp and then put it under a bushel basket. It is set on the lampstand where it gives light to all in the house. Just so, your light must shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your heavenly Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is a great and glorious day to celebrate and give thanks uh, for the gift of marriage, and uh, certainly a privilege for the opportunity to be here and witness uh, this historic event. And uh, we gather to pray with you. It's a great honor to be with uh, Deacon Dave Kushner, who is the uh, director of the formation program of the permanent diaconate uh, office in the Diocese of Cleveland. And Dave, thanks for your service and assistance today. My name is Father Don Alexiak, and I am the weekend help here at St. Martin's during this interregnum period, as we call it. We don't have a bishop in the diocese, and uh, so on the weekends I'm here and have had a chance to get to know these fine people. Amanda, as I know, Jacob, but we'll be calling him William today, as official name. Uh, during the week I have other duties in the diocese, but it's great joy to, to be here because it does allow me the opportunity to meet such wonderful people. And today, our scriptures invite us to reflect more deeply upon the responsibility all of the baptized have with regard to being a light, being salt, being the Lord's ambassadors in our daily encounters with everyone we meet. And in a particular way today, the scriptures invite us to think about a couple of things. First, as we heard in our reading, first reading, they talk about the, the hope and the reward of a good and holy life is to live to a ripe old age, as we hear in Scripture. And to live to a ripe old age means that we have to be focused and attentive uh, to doing the will of God. And doing the will of God is not always easy, especially in a culture and a society and a world that is not always eager to hear or see or experience what God asks of us, to do good, to avoid evil, to attend to the needs of our brothers and sisters, to give witness and testimony by our actions, words, and deeds. As we go on to listen to the scriptures then, we realize that the reward of a good and holy life is a long life. And, and today, in a very particular way, we hear St. Paul reminds the people of Colossians the reality of how important it is to have love as the foundation. Paul advises, admonishes, encourages, and challenges the faithful of his time, and he challenges you and me as well to put on love. Love has to be the foundation. And the love that St. Paul talks about is a love that is patient and kind, as we hear him talk in Corinthians. Today, he reminds us and encourages both of you, as you enter into the sacred love to life together, is that you might be faithful to one another, bear with one another. That means that the fact that you put up with one another, uh, because you are here today and will be standing before us knowing each other's strengths, but I am also aware that you are very attentive to each other's weaknesses, because we are all flawed as humans. We have our imperfections. But the great blessing of marriage, as we talked 
in the office not too long ago is the fact that you have each other to draw and call forth and to celebrate the goodness and to have each other to help overcome the imperfections. Bear with one another. Allow peace to reign in your hearts. Allow the love of God, God's love, not the love of a double cheese pepperoni pizza and a cold beverage, not the love of anything of this world, but God's love. And it is that love that is overwhelming at times. It's a love that we find just being mysterious at times. The fact that the Lord brought the two of you together, the fact that the God brought all of us here to celebrate this great wedding today. It is the love of God that you need to embrace. And the Lord challenges you to be a witness to the world that in your covenant relationship as husband and wife, that you courageously live your faith and witness your faith. In the canon of the Mass, it says that marriage is a mere reflection of God's love. And so today, as the two of you say, I do, and enter into the sacred covenant, you are accepting a noble, yet challenge, challenging responsibility. Because you now know that marriage is not private. It is a public reality in the church. That's why we're here witnessing and celebrating with you. That's why we're breaking open the word and listening to those who have gone before us. We gather at the sacred table and are reminded of the most incredible gift of love. Through the suffering, death, and resurrection of Jesus, we have a place in the kingdom of God. And the gift of marriage is that you have the opportunity to journey together. Not for things of this world, but to get to heaven. That's the ultimate goal. It is the love that needs to be the foundation, God's love. When we look at you as you enter into the sacred life, we are supposed to be reminded of God's presence. As you walk down the road of life hand in hand, we are supposed to be reminded that God walks with us. As you love one another throughout the many years of your marriage together, we are reminded that God loves us. As you forgive one another, not that that's going to have to happen too often, right? We're reminded that God forgives us. And so you do mirror, you do reflect, and you are charged to give witness to your faith and your covenant marriage by the manner in which you live your lives. And so we're here not just to say how wonderful you both look. You do look dapper today, by the way. But we're here to do more than that. We're here to support you, encourage you, and remind you you come from good stock, good holy people, good faithful people good families, and you come together today now to begin your life together as husband and wife. And our prayer is that as God instructs you and encourages you and has brought you to this day, that you might rely on his love, the support of family and friends, and continue to trust in him as you strive to be faithful to this covenant that you are about to enter into. And so, be filled with kindness and humility and gentleness and patience, bearing with one another, forgiving one another, and loving one another as the Lord so generously loves you. If you do that, you will be faithful to your vows. You will be a mirror of God's love. And you will successfully live a long and happy life as husband and wife. Our prayers are with you. We encourage and support and ask you to continue to give witness each and every day of your lives. Witness to God's love, mercy, and forgiveness as you are husband and wife this very day. So, my dear friends, if your knees enable you to get up at this time, I'll invite you to come forward and enter into the sacred covenant.
presence of the church's minister and of this community of family and friends. Christ abundantly blesses your love. He has already consecrated you in baptism, and now he enriches and strengthens you by a special sacrament, so that you may assume the duties of marriage in mutual and lasting fidelity. And so, in the presence of the church, I ask you to state your intentions. William and Amanda, have you come here freely and without reservation to give yourselves to each other in marriage? We have. Will you love and honor each other as husband and wife for the rest of your lives? We will. Will you accept children lovingly from God and bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? We will. My dear friends, since it is your intention to enter into marriage, I ask that you now face one another and join your hands together. I William take you, Amanda. To be my wife. To be my wife. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. I, Amanda, take you, William, to be, my husband. to be my husband. I promise to be true to you. I promise to be true to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. I will love you and honor you. I will love you and honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. You have declared your consent before the church. May the Lord in his consent fill you both with his blessings. But God is joining this day. No one must survive. <laughs> To take this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. It's a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Now we take the ring and the blessing of the ring. William, take this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the, Son, and of the, Holy, and of the, Holy, Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, you may now kiss as husband and wife. I love you. I love you. That's so cute. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As they do so, congregation, I would like you to stand as we continue our prayer. Congratulations, Thank you. God bless you. Thank Congratulations. You. Congratulations. Can we go back to a seat. Yeah, you do, and you sit together now. Okay. Okay. Help you.
receive strength and inspiration for our lives, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those members of our families who have passed from this world, especially the members of the Perkins, Cherokee, McCormick, and Pino families, that as they will join with us in this banquet table of the Eucharist, we hope to one day join them in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the loving God, the only one who joins you today with our prayers and petitions, we ask that you to hear us and grant these prayers through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated as we prepare for you. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands, for the praise of your Lord and your Savior, for our good and all souls of Receive in your kindness, Lord, the offerings we bring in gladness before you, and in your fatherly love, watch over those who have joined in the sacramental covenant. 
through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For in Christ you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacrament we celebrate might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with all the angels and saints we praise you, and without end we acclaim.
So at the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we have the courage to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. begin their life together as husband and wife. Lord our God, creator of the universe and maker of man and woman in your own likeness, source of blessing for married life, we humbly pray to you for Amanda, who today is united with William in the sacrament of marriage. May your fullest blessing come upon them so that they may together rejoice in your gift of married love and enrich your world with their children. Lord, may they both praise you when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrows. May they be glad that you help them in their work and know that you are with them in their need. May they pray to you in the community of the church and be your witnesses in the world. And may they reach old age in the company of their friends and come at last to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My dear friends, the peace of the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer to one another a sign of Christ's peace. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Congratulations to you both. Okay. Okay, let's go see you. My parents first. Yes. I will try not to step on your dress. Son. Peace be with you. Hi, Mom. Peace be with you. Daughter. Step on dress. Thank you for Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should have left my word, but only say the word, and my soul shall be
body of Christ. Amen.
Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world, through Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you now to join us in prayer as they make a visit to Mary's altar. Mr. and Mrs. McCormick.